There we go. Hello, ghouls, guys, gals, and any other life forms that may be streaming this broadcast. You are now listening to Storming the Unknown, where we have the paranormal, UFOs, and extraterrestrials, cryptids, serial killers, and dark history all under one freaky little roof. A gathering place for the morbid curiosity to come and play and learn about the deepest, darkest parts of the unknown. Feast on this smorgasbord of everything supernatural, and brace yourselves as we go Storming the Unknown. Hello, ghouls and guys, and all you cool cats and kittens out there. Meow. Um, <laughs> on this very wonderful <laughs> Monday night, but apparently, and again, I'm not a world clock, Chris, so don't you be chiming in with I should know. Um, <laughs> uh, one o'clock in the morning there, so not at the same time, but I appreciate it nonetheless. She's talking, she's talking about you, you know that. Chris McKinnell <laughs> is a special guest tonight, which is the most amazing thing in the world because you know I would never ask because just, I know you're so busy. But to say that, like, you know, I don't care is mean because, you know, I wrote a whole article on you. So you should feel like a little bit special. <laughs> there we go. You might fall over the table. <laughs> <laughs> No, the mobile one, don't worry about it. We're, we're fine. <laughs> so, tonight we have Miss Catherine Cirillos and Mr. Chris McKinnell from the Warren Legacy Foundation. And then they both actually have shows. One of them is the Warren Files and the other is Mystical Whispers. And they're mm -hmm. both on the Spirit Realm Network. And I have all of those links in the info for the show. So you guys can click on those to check everything out. And I will drop more of the Warren Legacy stuff because there's so much. It I ran out of characters in the description. <laughs> so I'm going to have to do the rest in the comments. But I'm going to go ahead and get it shared. You guys go ahead and give a little bit of background on yourselves. And then we will go ahead and get started. Now, what kind of background do you, do you want? <laughs> Not your criminal background, because that's not anybody's <laughs> business. Um, that would take uh, far too long. I, see, um, and I love that you ask, because when people ask, you know, so tell us your story. And I'm like, well, my mom and my dad, you know, had me when they were. You know, so <laughs> and just as a joke, but I was really expecting something real weird from you. So whatever you want, whatever you think is pertinent for these people to know before okay. we get started. All right. Um, well. Everybody knows that I'm a psychic medium, right, and uh, paranormal investigator. Um, I started having my experiences uh, from a very young age, from the age of 11. Um, I started uh, seeing and feeling things or someone always behind me talking to me or um, following me. That's what I always used to feel a presence. So I would um, talk to myself. I would walk down the street and I would talk to myself or whistle. <clears throat> I would always look back or I would always run at home scared that somebody was behind me. And um, at that point, I would tell my mum and dad what was happening. Mind you, mum and dad, mum was, um, I later found out that mum had premonitions, premonitions through her dreams. My dad knew how to do tarot readings. He predicted his, his own death at, uh, before he died. And then two years ago, I found out that my grandpa used to talk to the fairies. So they used to keep that like a little secret. They wouldn't share it around. <laughs> so, um, And your family is Greek, correct? Like you're... Yes, my, my parents are Greek, yeah. They were and Greek, sorry. So the spiritual aspect of that, when you have kind of Orthodox Christians, you have like a bunch of different religions mixed all because of different, you know, oh, Greek, Greek you know. Orthodox. So yes. how do they cope with that though? Like that <gasps> side of it, is it kind of like Catholics, how Catholics do? I've always been very curious about that. It was. Worse? Worse. I had an auntie, <clears throat> my auntie, she, her husband was my dad's brother. So there were a lot of, she lived in a house where there was a lot of misfortunes happening. Like, uh, but in her house, she had a lot of uh, different artifacts that looked haunted. She even had the crying boy in there. Mm -hmm. So every time I would walk past the painting, I would fall, I would feel really eerie and I would fall, I would feel like a cold breeze coming through. Um, 
when she bought that painting that year that she bought her painting uh her business went out of luck i got burnt my uncle died from a heart attack like a lot of misfortunes happened so at that point i would go she never had any any children with my uncle so i would go over there and sleep and at night time she would um <clears throat> she would hear the the doors knocking or the toilet seat going up and down toilet door going closing and opening and at least they then, were using the toilets though at least it goes from peeing on the floor at that point i told my i had told my parents about me seeing things right and she turned around to my mom and dad i told you she's possessed <laughs> <laughs> that's a one that's one way to describe you <laughs> yeah. mind you i've been i've been um i was gonna say sacrifice no, no. I've, been, <laughs> i've been baptized three times <laughs> sacrifice i can't even with you oh my god just i'm sorry guys you're not gonna get a lot of like straight we're, we're gonna be doing this this is how basically all of our conversations go mm -hmm. and yeah. like she's she's nuts and I, I fucking love it it's the best they're both crazy <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> so I, I just got cursed I'll, out okay i've been baptized three times once when i was really young six months uh they thought i was clean i was sick uh i went to hospital clinically oh, dead they had to baptize me in the church in the hospital and then i got better i came out of hospital to baptize me normally and then my second baptism is after that auntie said i was possessed my third actually baptism was after that auntie said i was possessed they, they got it right with me the first time <laughs> Mind you, mind you, mind you, she told my mum I was possessed. So she decided to take my mum and myself at the age of 12 to the, it was called the San Cypriots Monastery. That's where we go into the Greek Orthodox being really fanatic. So every Wednesday at the Greek Orthodox Monastery called the San Cypriots, they would perform exorcisms. It was a thing. Every Wednesday they perform exorcisms. Okay. Like, wait, wait, wait. Okay. Now, when you say exorcisms, because there are lots of different ways that people perform those. Like, real in cultures. Like, exorcisms, actually, like, you so know, the, the power world. of Christ compels you type exorcism. shit. Yep, All right. Yep. 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 <laughs> yep. They, they, okay. they order out for possessed people. Exactly. There'll, there'll be like three lying on the floor, and the priest will be on top doing the, the works. Now, Papa? You were brought there, so obviously not genuinely possessed. But were, did you ever encounter people that I, you thought, or when you look back at it later, believe that maybe they were? Okay, when I walked into the church, the first time I walked in, that's when I realized, well, at the age of 11, I didn't know what an empath or a sensitive or a psychic was, right? Mm -hmm. So walking into the church and seeing the priest performing the exorcisms, I <clears throat> encountered everything that that person on the, especially one girl, she, I won't, I can forget her face, her, her short black hair, the way she, her body just twisted and the way she was speaking in tongues and she was swearing at the priest. And I copped all that as an empath. And everybody that was in, like we're talking about, um 100 people 100 200 people in the church in the monastery watching those exorcisms being performed every week so i was copying their energy and i was copying that girl's energy that was getting exercised right so i couldn't handle it <clears throat> i ran out of the church and i fainted and my auntie's answer was, see, I told you she's possessed. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. You don't, you don't understand. <laughs> oh, my God. Mm -hmm. See, but, I mean, that's just, that was just, like, the beginning story. Imagine what else she has to tell about her life. Like, that was just the early part. She gets crazy. <laughs> so, okay, this woman is just, like, absolutely magical, and we'll totally get into that. But Chris, go ahead and give people a little bit of background about you. And then I want to get into the questions and let them 
just like see how magnificent your minds are because it's mind bottling. It, it, oh, yeah. um, my name is Chris McKinnell and like these two lovely ladies, I am a member of the Warren Legacy Foundation for Paranormal Research. We carry on the work of my grandparents and Lorraine Warren and um, we do it all over the world. If you want to know more about us, uh, we have a YouTube channel with 62 videos on it now, telling all about mm -hmm. the work we do. It's called The Warren Files uh, YouTube channel. Um, and you can certainly learn an awful lot on there. Uh, we don't recommend that you think you watch it and then you become an investigator. Um, but it is certainly um, a place where you can learn to protect yourself. And by the way, I just want to say, um, Ashley is one of the best people we've got. We love her dearly. She is truly special. She and um, you are watching the best program you could possibly be watching. Don't make me cry. Not in front of everybody. They can't know I have feelings from the hood, <laughs> y'all. Don't get it wrong. <laughs> I really appreciate that. Like, I, but. You don't even understand the things that you guys have taught me just within the past, what, year and a half, maybe, of you guys helping me and being a part of this. For anyone, this is the safest place to do it that I've found. You know what I'm saying? Everybody can say pair unity all they want, but the foundation that we have is genuinely nothing but questions and answers. Nothing is judged. We're not quick to say that anything's oh, and I hate using this word but demonic and stuff but we're equipped to deal yeah. with it you know what I'm saying there's a huge difference in what we do we have people who are trained to deal with these things and help these people the right way and it's it's magnificent and how you help us grow like um she she blew my mind so I talk I did get chills even just talking about when I've talked to her <laughs> The things that she's helped me learn about myself that I thought I literally thought that I was crazy. Like y'all know me. I'm just kind of out there anyway, but I legit thought I was like insane. And the way she described things to me was just mind blowing. Like um, one thing I wanted to talk about tonight was the dream walking thing. I've been mm -hmm. researching it way more since you told me about that. And it came up in a program mm -hmm. actually about a month and a half ago, I think we were talking about sleep paralysis and stuff. Mm -hmm. And remember I told you, I always thought that's what it was. But when I would wake up from these dreams and it was usually the same entity. And I mean, this like demonic monster looking figure, huge, like seven, eight feet. Um, and it's the same like spear type staff thing. And it didn't look like a pitchfork, but it had three ends on it every single time. And no matter where it hit me, because I would always die in my dreams the same way, well, no matter where it hit me, I would wake up with those marks and then, like a huge bruise around it. And I always just thought it was me hitting myself in my sleep and kind of just <clears throat> associating the two. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm a flailer when I sleep. But the dream walking thing, can you explain all of that to us in more in depth? is when you google it there's a lot of stuff but i want to hear more about it from you okay there's uh there's differences between astral traveling and dream walking dream walking is when you be able it, it, the word says dream walking you you are able to to walk into someone else's dream either they you can do it with a permission or without the permission but when you do it with a permission you you are able to interact with that person now, if you do it without the permission, you pick up any negativity that, that, might, that they might have or any illness. That's when you're dream walking in between someone, another human, right? Mm -hmm. Now, um, with, you dream, with your dream walking, honey, it wasn't dream walking into someone else's dream. You were actually dream walking in other realms. And you were fighting with other entities. That's even more that though. Um, the difference between astral projection is that uh, when you astral project and you go into other realms, you can't get, you can't, 
uh, physically get as hurt as you do when you dream walk. That's a difference. That's kind of even more like, how do you <laughs> guard yourself from that then? Because I mean, I'm a heavy sleeper. I, I can, I've literally slept through hurricanes and people breaking into apartments. Mm -hmm. we have, you know, like, I can with, astral, with astral projection or astral traveling, whatever you want to call it, people call it, it's the same thing to me. Astral projection or astral, well, you project to travel, it's the same thing to me. Mm -hmm. So that's, your cord, that silver cord that we talk about, that always can't, brings you back into your body, okay? Mm -hmm. So if suddenly something uh, wakes you up, someone walks in your room and wakes you up, or another entity or another spirit or another soul goes past at that point through your body, have you ever noticed that... Um, when you astral travel, have you ever noticed that something might go through your body or you might see a shadow when you're looking at your body on top? It's always like I, it falls into me. It's not that it goes through. It's like it hits me like a ton of bricks. Okay. It's not like now, a gradual flow. Right. Like a, when you come back. When you come back or when you feel that there's something else there around you. When I come back, when there's something else around me, it's like mm -hmm. I'm stuck. Not right. yet. And I can't go back. I've had the same experience. That's what's scary. Okay. See, what happens is there's a lot of souls or lost souls that are lost. And once they find a vessel, because our vessel is open at that point, our body is the vessel, so it's open. But that cord, that silver cord, will not let any other. This, um, and any other entity or a lost soul come into a body. So it guards it. But our soul that's up in the astral plane, as soon as it realizes, it's like that little cord going ding, 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 ding. It's like a, a little bell going off, right? Mm -hmm. Saying, hello, there's someone there. So all of a sudden, our body, our ethereal body comes back in. But it, because of our panic mode, it doesn't come back in the way it came out. So sometimes we come back in the way, the wrong way around. So if you came out face up, because of your panic, you will come back either with your feet or with your head. And that's the impact that hurts when your etheric body and your human body comes in contact. And that's why when you wake up in the morning or you feel like you've been, been bashed all night. What, what about the not breathing thing? That's the, exactly. TC says he can't wake me up, and I it's like for about a minute and a half, two minutes that I I just won't breathe, and then when I do finally, and it's not sleep apnea. Like I've been tested for everything because we couldn't figure it out. He can't wake me, and it's the nights that I have the dreams and like wake up mm -hmm. with the stuff because I get choked out before I get stabbed. It happens every single time. The scenery is different every time, but it's always yep. the same entity. Yeah, every time it's like you're fighting with that entity up there. That's what's been happening with you and that entity. You're fighting up there. So um as soon as you get stabbed, it's like um you feel like your life is ending. So you're coming back into your vessel. But you because of your panic mode, you're not coming back the same way. We lost her, where'd she go? Keep talking just in case. Okay. Um, no, we lost Ashley. No, my Did mouse she? clicked over to another screen. <laughs> so you're coming back, and that's why it takes a bit of time or a few seconds to for your body to be adapted again to its physical form, to its physical... Um, to redistribute. Uh, exactly. Properly. Yep. Huh. Well, then, so how do I figure out what it is? Like people who suffer <clears throat> from this thing, how do you figure out what entity it is and what, how do you stop it? Like, is there any stopping it? Because I'd like it to stop. <laughs> <laughs> I'd really like it to stop. Okay, does it happen every night? No, it happens in like bunches in the beginning almost of every month. It's like clockwork. It'll happen for like three or four nights. And 
then it just doesn't happen again. Since I've had him, though, I haven't had them at all. Okay. It's the weirdest thing. Since I've had him, I haven't had them. When I was pregnant with them, I was still having them. And that was super scary because the bru I'm telling you, the bruises that I would wake up with, like, it's not just the little tiny bruises. You know, they're huge, like, really deep black bruises. And it hurts. Like, I feel it. I feel that pain in my dream. When he stabbed, every time I get stabbed, I feel like something's tearing into my skin. And it kind of feels the same way when I wake up. It takes a while for that sensation to go away. What do you do to, pr to protect yourself, to set up psychic boundaries? Nothing that I've used. Everything that, you know, we've worked through, like the white light stuff, the grant, just mm -hmm. anything, nothing works. I've tried doing um, even like the Catholic ones that I was brought up with when I would go to sleep and stuff, the ones that made me feel safe. You know what I'm saying? Because it doesn't matter what you practice actively. And you guys both can attest to this, whatever holds most stock in your heart and your mind that you believe it will protect you. And it does for me. That was very comforting when I was younger and because I've had it since I was little, like since I can remember, I've been having these dreams. So that always made me feel comforted that if I did die in my sleep, at least I'd be fine, but please, while I'm sleeping, don't let anything harm or affect me. And it never works. I've but noticed when I try and do like cleansings with uh, mm -hmm. oils and different, um, I guess, crystals and stuff, it gets mm -hmm. worse. Kind of like how sage mm -hmm. does, it, it gets mad. I never use sage, but when I, I try like and it. Do with it, it, it gets worse. The pain is worse. Yeah, because it's not from this world, honey. Well, it needs to go back to its world. Or I need to stop going into its world. You need to stop going to its world. Yeah. But how do it's I stop going? going? I'm not trying. It's not like I got like a travel visa to this place. And I'm like, hey. <laughs> let's, now, that you've got, let's go. now that you've got the little one, he, you haven't had those dreams for ages. Mm -hmm. So it sort of stopped. I would bet. It has a lot to do with that mothering instinct you now have and how attached you are now. And so I'm, I'm, this is only a theory, but my theory would be that you just are not willing to leave anymore. Whereas in the past, you being you, you were able to just slip out of your body. Now that you... Makes you so much you You're put so your brilliant, brilliant, guys. Like, look at this. Those <laughs> dudes, they're so amazing. Like, that makes so much sense. See, I don't feel like it's going to come back then. You know, I feel, huh, look at that. Grounded. And I mm. I know that she can feel how. You are. Um, that's so nice. Mm. Thank you. You wow. put, you, you that put makes your so much sense. Up. Yeah. This is not your your war or your um. It is. It's not your war to fight. You've you've done what you had to do, and you're protecting your baby and yourself at the moment. So you put your barriers up. It's done. It's finished. That's the only reason I'm crying, y'all. Not because I'm soft. Don't you get it twisted? <laughs> <laughs> we love you. I'm so serious. Like anytime I talk about you, I get like this. I was oh, on another oh show and I talked about how I cry I'm every time here. I think of Catherine too. <laughs> right? You probably cry in anger. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm not, he calls me a, my, a Greek mummy. A Greek mummy. I do not call her a Greek mummy. <laughs> I, I do call her a very, very Greek mummy. <laughs> She's a Greek mama to every single person in the house, including myself. Yeah. And I'm a lot older. <laughs> It's gotta be rules in this house. <laughs> oh, she runs a tight <laughs> ship, y'all. That's a <laughs> that is so funny. <laughs> oh, no. oh my gosh. Um, so another thing we wanted to touch on, and again, don't get it twisted, y'all. It's I swear to God, I was on another show talking about you and how we had that conversation when I thought I was going absolutely bananas when I remember that. The humans started being louder than mm -hmm. the spirits were oh my god and 
you just, you help so much. So if you're going through things like this, please reach out to us so we can help you because life is so much easier when you know what the hell is going on because this exactly. stuff is real and you may grow up in places that you don't have a safe place to talk about this. And these are the perfect people to talk to. They know everything. Well, not everything, but not everything. We, we know he knows everything, but we will help you as much as we can. We do not judge. Mm -hmm. Is and crazy. Is we're all network, so we can call on other people who, who know things we don't know. Yes, exactly. that's the most beautiful thing. We have people who are literally all over the world mm -hmm. that if somebody contacts us, we can refer them out to somebody. If somebody's having a particular problem, we have different types of shamans and like priests, all, all the all these cool different things that you have access to by booking at the Warren Legacy Foundation page. And I'm trying to find it now to put it in. <laughs> Doctors and psychologists and yes. quantum physicists and and we are talking to a fantastic ex marines member. and just awesome people. Not that one only, only the best get in. Yep. And I've only ever asked one person to join the foundation. I I've, I've only ever actively recruited one who wasn't seeking to join the foundation and that's you ashley you're the only one mm. no why yeah. you now it's just like a make ashley cry night i'm not appreciating oh, my baby. <laughs> i'm just kidding but like I, you don't even i think i know that you guys know how much i appreciate it but i just it's surreal because the help that's all you that's all i want to do is help people and I we get to do it on the best level possible to do it and it's it's so beautiful and I wish that everybody understood that it doesn't have to be about what did I capture what did I do there's real things in this world and if we're going into it just seeking that aspect of it we're just making it worse for everybody else especially when we're doing home investigations so please don't investigate homes if you're just looking for the evidence or the what can I capture? All the clicks, Please. all the yeah. videos, all the fame, all the ego. I all was talking to uh, homes. Yes. I was talking to Catherine's son uh, this afternoon, and he was asking about this. And I said, "Look, I don't have all the answers. I know it works. I'm not interested in gathering a bunch of evidence so I can share it online. My focus isn't on proving anything." Once I diagnosed the problem, my focus is on the family that I'm trying to help. I don't give a damn if I ever hear an EVP or, you know, get thrown across the room again. Yes. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> uh, but that's not, it should never be a person's focus. If, if you're in there to help, then you better be professional. You better be focused on the people and not on your own ego. Don't be like the idiots on TV who go in, stir trouble up, and then leave, or the ones on YouTube who do that too. You know, you, if you go into a home, you better be there to help and stay there until it's fixed or until you realize there's really no chance of helping because the family won't work with you. Mm -hmm. That does happen. And we are actually incredibly thorough about how we – vet these people it's not just we get a story and then we go out we make sure that we have all of the background information necessary and we do video chats with these people and we mm -hmm. usually have someone like Catherine or myself on like psychics and people who can read other people that way we can tell whether or not they're telling the truth because the problems that they're experiencing sometimes it could be all mental. It could be something they're manifesting themselves. It could be something drug or mental, you know, related as in, you know, a mental disorder. Or, defect. They, or they could be psychic or yes. they could have just a ghost or they could have an elemental or mm -hmm. they can have a demon or they could have. There are all sorts of possibilities. And diagnosis is 50 percent of the job. Mm -hmm. so, we can't just go in saying that everything's a demon when it's just grandma trying to touch the baby. Like that's exactly. not, that's not how it works at all. And it's and, almost always grandma. Yes. Mm -hmm. We've, 
Well, she said, mm. she said well, maybe sometimes it's grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It, it's almost always not a demon. Yeah. Yes, but the whole, and we've talked about this before, Chris and I, especially when we're having private conversations, like to do the whole, come, come touch me, uh, show me what you can do type stuff. Oh, how no, no, I, we I don't like, say that. Let's make this clear. <laughs> no, 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 no. I make, how I make fun of him when we talk, and I'm just like how I compare him to the, these people that were, when we first started talking, in the very, very beginning, how I was like, I cannot stand investigators who go in and start saying, do what right. you can, scratch me, the provoking thing. Yeah. Um, no. This is a very big issue that we have on tours. Yeah. You have, when in public places, and we've had this discussion too, that in public places, you can just be bringing any groups anywhere, willy-nilly. You have to be vetting these places, making sure they're safe to be, bring these people to, first and foremost. Mm -hmm. Um, that people are very irresponsible about that in certain locations here. And um, they don't check up with these people after they've taken them somewhere. Uh, it's basically all for the money. And how would you guys, I guess, direct people to keep... <sighs> See, I'm trying to be nice. I'm really, I've been trying to be nicer and not curse as much. And then I can't find the words for fuckers. Um, <laughs> they keep these fuckers out because it drives, it, it drives me absolutely nuts. They sign the waiver because we have a waiver and everything. We have um, the agreement that you sign. Uh, it's everything that you cannot do use provocation. We treat them with respect just as mm -hmm. they were human beings because they were human beings at one point, even if it's an mm -hmm. entity or whatever, you know, we still were respectful and they, and I, it's in the waiver. You'll get kicked out if you start doing any of it. So they still start doing it. No, they're going to be kicked out, but how do you deter people like that? Sadly, <laughs> I don't see how you can. Yeah. I mean, we don't go into these tours unless, it, as you mentioned yourself, it's a place that you vetted and you know is safe. I don't bring people into insane asylums or former prisons or, you know, hospitals that have had a lot of tragedy or anything. And what hospital hasn't? You know, right. That's not what we do. You know, um, Unfortunately, there's free will, and there are going to be idiots out there who are going to do these things with or without you being on a tour. At least with you, they're being led by someone who knows what they're doing, and it, it's safer than if they walked into that place by themselves or with their drunk friends and tried to stir up trouble. And that's why I, I, like I, doing I, would, it. I would say if you see somebody who's been drinking beforehand don't let them in exactly oh yeah we even have a one of the clauses is no alcohol you know um drugs firearms but some parts of texas they're like i'm not giving up my firearm but there are certain locations that i'm like it's okay if you have a carry license then you're a protection for the night just you know just know you can't shoot a ghost so don't just go shooting at anything that starts bumping yeah. up behind you <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of insane because they do they get skittish oh man they're it, it's very intense and i like being the person who teaches them not necessarily how to do it the right way but to do it the responsible way um and i guess kind of what they say debunk how they do it on tv and goes much because that's what everybody knows they get so nervous and they come in and Basically, everything that they've signed in the clause is everything that they've done or they see in Ghost Adventures. They can't use provocation. They can't speak to the spirits like this, you know. And so they're like, well, I don't know what to say now. When we do spirit box sessions and EVP sessions and stuff, they're like, well, I don't know what to say because the only thing I've ever seen is them talking to them like that. It was like, it's like a living room with your family. Talk like you're amongst friends and get to know them. Let them know you. And it's... It's such a beautiful experience when they genuinely understand what's happening and aren't fearful of it. It shouldn't be about, can we scare you with this? Can we scare you with that? 
profound experiences with them and understanding how to share that space, basically. It's the, those people is the five minute of fame. That's all it is. And they think that, okay, we're going to do this video and we're going to go there and do that investigation and now I'm going to start screaming and swearing and maybe they'll catch it on video and they will show my face. Little do they know that that gets edited. Yeah. They, yeah. they don't show the 12, 13 hours that you sit there that absolutely exactly. nothing happens. I do. <laughs> you can go ahead and watch my eight-hour documentaries on my YouTube mm -hmm. channel because I my show mind. every part of me just sitting there. Because <laughs> that's what it is. If yeah. And I've had like... I think it's like a thousand views now and I can't even believe that people actually sat there and watched that whole thing. But I, mm -hmm. to those thousand people that made a, a difference in how you yeah. do stuff and maybe they won't go and spend their money to go on an investigation. That's what pisses me off the most. That's when we go on investigations and we're like 30 minutes into it and then like nothing's happening yet. Do something, say something and not doing it in a mean way, but you know, trying to like command them like it's a show. They don't act for us. It's not, it's not a circus. They don't perform. Right. Yeah. Knock once for no and twice for yes, please. <laughs> mm. yeah. You it's said like these, are, these are people too. Yeah. They're not trained ponies. They have to be treated with respect. And, you know, for me personally, if I have the opportunity to help them cross over, if they want to cross mm -hmm. over, I'm going to help them cross over regardless of what the venue says. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh that's one of the things that I kind of don't like getting into though. And I mean, personally, because I don't know where I'm sending them. I know how to do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I can send you to the light. I can help you cross over, but I don't know where they're going. And I can't, I don't want to promise somebody that, you know, it's going to be better there. Maybe they like it here better than they end up liking it there. So I don't want to be the liar. So when they actually, you know, come back, come back, you know, they're at my ass, like, what'd you do to me? And I'm so confused. <laughs> I but, can teach you how to cross the Maiva completely. Yeah. And there's nothing to fear about crossing exactly. over spirit. That That's not an issue. They're just continuing their journey. It, it's not an end. It's it's not it's not the end result, and they're going to the, either paradise or hell. That doesn't it doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. We're always progressing closer and closer to God. Some of us are really in, lost in the dark, and we have to cross over so that we can come back again and keep learning. But others, you know, are really enlightened, and there are few and far between, and you know. They get to pass over and they can choose, do I come back as a teacher or do I become that much closer to God? Some of them stay as spirit guides or guide, mm -hmm. like, yeah, guiding us in this human life until we pass over. Mm -hmm. So I usually say that if you want to talk to a loved one or um, communicate with them, not with the Ouija boards and and sayings and things like that. I'm totally against those. But if you want to communicate with a loved one, if you want to say what you want to say, if you want to forgive, forgive them, or you will ask forgiveness, usually you light up a little candle next to the photo with something that belonged to them because the, the light shows them the way to come and it's the way to go back because it's apparently the path to come back and forth is dark, so the light shows them the, a way to come back and forth. And um, and you say what you want to say. It's also important to remember that you're giving them recognition. You're exactly. calling on them. And they're aware of that. Mm -hmm. That's why um, in big family gatherings, like for holidays or a funeral or a wedding, often spirits will show up there. Yeah. Because all those family members are talking and, and thinking about the, that, that energy of that yeah. person, regardless of it's spoken or thought is mm -hmm. like a magnet almost. It's, exactly. yeah, it's called the law of recognition. Mm -hmm. And they they feel that and it, it draws them. And it's the same thing when you light the candle and with the picture and the object, that those things have energy. Those things have mm -hmm. resonance with that spirit. Now, with that person. could I bring through Cthulhu? 
Who? Cthulhu. No. Cthulhu, Cthulhu <laughs> was uh, invented by this guy named H.P. Lovecraft. I so know who Cthulhu is. is. I know. I know you is. know, but your audience may not know. Oh <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, Cthulhu's not like a, de a demon. I'm. I just promise y'all, I'm not trying to bring I'm a demon. Even, it's it's a crackney like type monster that's gonna bring yeah. forth the. I want him as yeah. a pet. Only I lives out in the dark of space. <laughs> Um, so another thing I had it written down to, we were going to talk about tonight. Yes. yes. Um, yes <laughs> we wanted to ask, I know somebody else had a question real quick. So I'm going to get to that real quick. Oh my mm -hmm. goodness. It's uh -huh. there in the comments. I've been trying to keep up, but hello, everybody, for watching. Thank you for tuning in, as always. Make sure you share, please, and thank you. I can't see the comments. <laughs> you can't? No, it's a small phone. Yeah, it's a, it's a phone. Oh. Um. Sorry, I can't see the comments. <laughs> Me and comments don't. I cannot find it right now, so we're just going to go ahead and talk. Um, we have about 15 minutes left, about mm -hmm. 20 actually. It's 7.43. We're going to go ahead and talk. You guys choose between psychic ability and spiritualism in the paranormal. Who's choosing between them? <laughs> yeah, it's a vote. And if it's a, if you choose, if you each choose one or the other, we'll have the crowd be the tiebreaker. Mm. We've been talking about psychic abilities for days now, uh -huh. um, and spirituality is something that everybody can touch. Mm -hmm. What do you want? <laughs> what do you guys want? Do you want psychic want ability? Same here. We can do both. Okay. So, psychic ability first. Psychic ability, go. Using it in general, how to cope with it, bam. But you can't be brief. I know you. So, just <laughs> try, kind of. Or you can take up all the time really, you want. Really I don't care. It's just like two the of energies them. around you. All right. Uh, Very brief. Briefly. Okay. An empath is someone that can, a sensitive is someone that can feel the energies. This is the difference. A sensitive is someone that can walk into a place and uh, where there's people, where there's uh, an environment, and they can pick up on the energies. They can just feel them. And so they might feel a bit down or they might feel a bit like they want to cry or they just want to walk out of that place or they might get a bit of a, you know, anxious. So that's a, a sensitive. Uh, an empath is someone that actually absorbs the energy of the environment or the absorbs the energy of the pers the people say if there's a table of a, a couple fighting and they're an empath is sitting right next to them they will absorb that energy and they might fight with their person that they're next to them right mm -hmm. so um that's what an empath is a psychic has got all of the above he will pick it up he will absorb it um, into a, an environment um, around the people. He might go to a haunted location and pick up the psychic um, residual that's been ha that, that's there in the past. So that's what a psychic is. A psychic also can um, read um, a photo, an object. That's called psychometry. Um, it's I, I just, I've always called it remote viewing. I didn't know that was no, an no, actual no. word. No, remote well, viewing is different. <laughs> then the, 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 well, then what's the what's the difference between that? What? I'm so mind blown. Because Chris has done. Chris, I'm pretty sure was just trying to test me when we first started because he would send me pictures and ask questions about people, and I think he was just trying to see if I could really do what I said I could do, but. The, the pictures are it's pictures of people, pictures of places. So what's the difference? Okay. This is psychometry. This is my husband Stelios, right? Uh -huh. This is his piece of papers. He's grabbed it. His energy is on there. I'm taking it and I'm holding it as a psychic. 
So I'm reading his energy and I'm starting to see his face, his features, who he is, what he does, where he's lived. So if it's if you're looking for someone that's lost or um, is dead or... Um, Hold on to a piece of jewelry. Something hard is his. better for holding on to energy. But something that's close to that person. Exactly. And you pick up on their energy, that's psychometry. Remote viewing, on the other hand, is... They give you a, perhaps a geographic location mm -hmm. and then you project yourself there and you see with your mind's eye everything around you. The CIA did some amazing uh, remote viewing um, studies and with they the went on for goats. Uh, well, that's based no, on loosely based. No, that's based on. Kind of, stuff yes. that yeah, they the did try. Scared of goats. Yeah. Oh. But was a program, you know, I did a program on the Warren Files about this, and if you if you look, the CIA declassified their psychic studies from the '60s and '70s, and there's some fascinating information available to you. Mm -hmm. All right, I get photos from people in Greece, right? Um, and this this is off the record. <laughs> I get photos where they're looking. Straight they are thousands of people. Eh? Yes, I know. This is off the record, but off the rock, off the record. <laughs> but they they are looking for gold, so they are gold hunters, right? Mm -hmm. Treasure hunters, whatever you want to call them. <laughs> so they will send me a photo of a place, and they will so, say to me, "Where is it?" And I'll be like, "There." Why have you never then, become a pirate? <laughs> So they've gone before that with their machines and it's it's right there where the machine is going off. That's remote viewing. So what is it then if I'm not touching anything but I can see the person's like it I don't they're old pictures, it doesn't have to be like a new picture of people. I can see the colors around them and stuff like it that. Could like what? Clear, it could be um clairvoyance. Clairvoyance is where you see things about people. Um, is she touching the picture or not? No, she's not touching no. it. So it, it, it's not. You just sent me pictures, okay, right. and had me read them like if they were on it's my phone. That's psychometry. That falls under the category of psychometry. Or clair clairvoyance. Oh, clairvoyance. Did those two go together? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> what is clairvoyance though? Like what? What were you going to discern about that? Clairvoyance is discernment. Yeah. Uh, it's where my grandmother was a clairvoyant mm -hmm. and she could stand in front of a home and be able to sense all of the haunted activity that was taking place in that home and tell us all about it. It was extraordinary to watch her. I, and it, this, in one particular case, I was right next to a local reporter who was preparing a story about this haunted house, but hadn't yet reported on it. And as my grandmother is standing in front of the house on the street, talking about a guy in a, a fat entity in a bloody apron and the smell of rotting flesh, the reporter is showing me his notes, which say these things. So she had all the same five senses tuned into one. Yeah. Yeah. She had clairvoyance, clair -es, what are they called? Clairaudience, yep. uh, clair... Uh, you know, all, all of the, the nose, being able yeah. to smell things psychically, taste yeah. things psychically. Like you're actually there experiencing everything. Exactly. Right. So exactly. what is it? That's clairvoyance too? Or that's no, what? No. It, it falls, it, they're called the clairs, but it's all the five senses tuned into one. Like the, your six, apparently your sixth sense. But it's like enhancing the smell, the taste, the hearing, the touch, but, the touch, but you're not actually hearing hello, you know, to someone actually talking to you. You can hear it. You can hear it, but in your head, in your head. Right. Whereas, and we never even got into the part with the um, mediums because a medium is another step above exactly. a psychic. All mediums are psychics, but not all oh, psychics sorry. are mediums, as our friend George the medium is always mm -hmm. saying, because mm -hmm. a psychic deals with the energies yeah. and and can, you know, yes, they can talk to the ghost in front of them, but a medium can 
talk to the dead on a regular basis in a way that's different, where they're getting messages from spirit in in from behind, and they're they're able to channel that information to others. Does that include channeling the, the channeling, like the actually coming in and them having conversations, and you kind of mm-hmm. have like a conversation amongst yourself because that happens. Yes, quite yes, a bit. absolutely. Yeah, my grandmother was a light trance medium, so and I'm, yeah, I'm the same. Mm-hmm. Um, when I'm doing it, I don't really remember much. I know, I mean, I'm still me. I'm not letting a, a spirit take over. No. But because I am in the zone, as I would call it, I don't yeah. really have a lot of memory about it later. You know, I, I know what I, I know some of the things I've said. And I, I'm like, you know, I don't think I should say this, but this is what, I, what wants to come out. And I'll say it to the person. And they're like, oh, yeah, that's yeah. So. But those are the things I don't really remember. That's, like, that's after the fact. That's a light trans medium, right? Like exactly with me, people come for readings. I will say what I want. I say what I have seen in the reading. Ask me five minutes later. Can't do a thing. That's exactly like Chris. It's like when we go on investigations. Jason will videotape me like talking, mm-hmm. and I have no. Recollection. Mm-hmm. No recollection of what you said. That's that's a light trance. You're going into a light trance at that point. Hmm. And is there any way? So he should he ever stop me if it gets bad? Because he even asked about that. Should he ever stop me when he gets? And I didn't know the answer because I have no idea. Has it ever gone bad? Stop me. No, but I'm. I just just in case we're prepared. Like I want to be prepared. If, so if things get bad, he can remove you from the place. Mm-hmm. And hit you with some holy water, if necessary. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe some blessed oil. You know, put it put it on your forehead. And well, actually, Catherine, I'm going to turn this over to you because you have the oils that you could talk about as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, I've made a mixture, honey. I've got some incense in here. Okay, um, I've got. Uh, the archangels incense in there i've got some comfort oil i've got holy oil holy water so when i feel that i'm um, overwhelmed or not grounded or in i go into a light trance i grab that it's like a roll-on and i go like that here there on my temples third eye because that's where we see things and the crown chakra because where we get the information from huh. <sighs> She actually, I, I put your website up where all the, you can find all this stuff. She makes all of the coolest things for a spiritualistic, like everything, spiritualism, healing, all this awesome stuff. And I wish you didn't live so far away because that shipping is expensive. But the neat thing is when she does it, she does it individually for each person. She takes the time to get to know you mm-hmm. and find out what you need. Oh, yes. And then she makes it to order. Mm-hmm. It's not just like... A, a, a manufacturing line. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It it really is, and it's again how we cater to each personal person. Actually, she shipping, takes it a little step further. Shipping is not um expensive, hun, because I, I ship a lot of things to America, like organized and oils. You gonna charge me pounds or American dollars though? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just For you, programs. I'm like, I'm like, I got some I shekels for you. All <laughs> <laughs> well, those things ain't worth nothing. Um, exactly. Yeah, American dollars, honey. American dollars. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I mean, you know exactly what I need. So, if you have something that you'd like to make up for me, I can get you to. Because she should we could get it going. Because I need, I need the comfort one, and you know it, and the. Um, what is it? The ground, the grounding one. Oh my god! I got you. I know what you need. Just, see, just give me your address and I'll ship it out. I need a whole like bulk order. Like I'm ordering from Sam's Club though. Like I need you to make a pile that's like this big, and there's like a pickle bucket full of some oils and shit. They're gonna stop it at customs and be like, "This is a bomb." Nah, man. I'm just trying to get my piece on. You better stop. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> 
Okay, so we do have one last question from mm -hmm. the audience. I finally found where it was. So it, she asked Karma, who has been in the chat all night. Thank you so much for watching, my lady. She said, "What it is? What is it called when you can see a ghost?" Sorry, guys, I don't have glasses, and my sight is horrible. I can't here, see that. Sorry, I have glasses. Hear like a disembodied thing. voice absorb energy and be sensitive, and you can look at an old building and see it like it was when it was brand new. Huh? Clairvoyance. Yeah. That's clairvoyance. Exactly. I think that we had covered that later. That was a question from a while ago, and I just now got to it. So mm -hmm. we answered it. Yay. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to look at my, I have my phone because that's the only way I can really read what's on the screen. So I have both up at the same time. <laughs> It's such a I'm mess. Like that I've got that phone and the phone, my daughter's phone when I'm looking at something. And she has two other people in the other room feeding her the information. Someone's got to do it. <laughs> I love when she has like technical issues and she still lives. Still lives. She sounds like Ozzy Osbourne yelling at Sharon when he gets frustrated. <laughs> he, does, he looks like it too. He's got the long hair. <laughs> you're not, you're not Ozzy Osbourne, she's saying. <laughs> That's what she said, yeah. Did you say you want oils? Tell you she is a saint. I want to make that clear. I are you are you serious? She's she's literally certifiable, but I love it. Because we both are. <laughs> like there's no like normalcy and normal's overrated first and foremost. Let's so just get yeah. that out of the way. But oh, she's yeah. just always there's always something new or something exciting and something fun. That's what I told Chris when I said earlier, Chris was acting uh, real feisty because he was in Scotland. And I don't know if like maybe that's where you're getting it from. It's just that, that Scottish right, you know. Yeah, it does. <laughs> I've been living with a Greek family. It's got nothing to do with the poor Scots. Don't blame them. It's a Greek thing, you know. <laughs> Oh Boy, I'm eating well. They, they, they make a great pizza, great moussaka, great salad, great this. Oh, my God, I'm happy. I've always wanted a moussaka made by an actual Greek person because I make it, but it's not like, I, I don't know if I do it right. When, oh, my gosh. So before we go, I need you guys to promote what we have coming up for the Warren Legacy Foundation in Rock Island. Mm. Yeah. Well, that's March, the last weekend in March. We're going to be at Rock Island, Illinois. Uh, it starts, yeah, if COVID allows it. It's from Friday night at 7 o'clock. We're going to go until 3 o'clock at 3.30 in the morning and then be back there again Saturday night, same time, 7 o'clock until 3.30 in the morning. We're going to have uh, dinner with everyone one night. You'll have a meet and greet, chance to talk with everybody there. We'll be sharing our information. We'll do presentations. And then around 10 o'clock at night, we're going to go out and we're going to go into a former haunted brothel and speakeasy, mm -hmm. which uh, <laughs> the girls uh, do not want to be crossed over. They're very happy there. Um, and they're, they're quite active. They sort of rub you from top to bottom. <laughs> <clears throat> but no happy uh, ending. Do not get mistaken. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. um, so it's it's an interesting it's an interesting time. It's a safe <laughs> venue. And we wouldn't do anything that wasn't safe. Uh, mm -hmm. But we've never, you know, um, Michelle Roos goes there with Riverside Iowa Paranormal mm -hmm. RIP. Uh, they're part of the foundation, as you're well aware, and they've never failed to come up with things. They always have something happen then. So we're limited. We're not going to have uh, more than 100 people. And I think this is going to be an extraordinary venue uh, for for everyone. If you're interested in it, uh, just reach out to us at the Warren Legacy Foundation, and we'll hook you right up. I have the links for that coming up in the comments, so you guys can go ahead and get the information there. Um, like I said, I was going to have to drop all the other war and legacy stuff because there's so many sites and Facebook pages and things for it that it wouldn't fit. I did not have enough space, y'all. So you can find all of the other links that you need, though, in 
the description section of this video. I would like to thank you both again for being so absolutely wonderful, so knowledgeable, and just so totally sweet, except for Chris, who's being mean tonight, but whatever. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. You know, I love you guys, and I love you so much, Chris. Oh, oh you big teddy bear. Oh, man. That's not true. You can, he, don't, don't cross him the wrong way. Don't get me, don't get it twisted, y'all. None of us are punks. We might be big softies with each other, but ain't none of us punks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was somebody did an angry react. I'm pretty sure that was just an accident, but if you really are angry, you can go watch another show. We're here to help you, all of us. Yes, the Warren out. Legacy Foundation will always be here for you guys. Make sure that you know that it is the safest space that you can discuss these things. We won't think you're crazy. Well, oh, really important. We don't charge and we no. don't ever expose you to the public. Mm -hmm. Nope. You will never be made the subject of a Facebook Live video privately, not getting permission from people. Even when you get permission, you probably really shouldn't. Um, no. uh, if it's not for the sake of education, exactly. yeah, if it's not for the sake of education and you haven't been there multiple times to know exactly what you're dealing with, there's no reason for that camera to be going because then you're not paying attention to what's going on around you and you're definitely not helping that family by being in there. Um, and please guys stop um, blessing people's houses with sage when you leave because you're just making last two hours, guys. <laughs> Catherine, can you tell them how to properly cleanse a house real quick? Because I, that was one thing I did want to touch on tonight. And how do you, without sage, because that's what everybody's go-to is, how do you no, have to do it? Now, only last two hours and it aggravates them even more. Now, um, if you can't get your hands on some um, incense, um, church incense frankincense and frankincense and myrrh. if you can't get your hands on to something like that, that doesn't matter. Uh, grab a bottle of holy water or blessed water. It doesn't matter what you believe in. You can actually get it from the church. You can actually bless it yourself, right? Yeah. Okay. And bless uh, oil. Bless, bless salt. Bless salt, black and white, because you got to balance things in your house. They both absorb any negative and, and any negativity, and the water, the holy water or blessed water, cleanses it. So you walk around with a big spray bottle with equal parts of salt and holy water or blessed water and you start spraying your house everywhere your windows your doors your cupboards anything your car yourself and um yeah make sure you let your clients know that you're going to be doing this because mm -hmm. i mean i let her know we were going to be blessing it but i guess i didn't exactly tell her what we were going to be use I, what we, I told her what we were going to use it but i didn't tell her it was going to be like in spray form so when i went and sprayed everything down because she was still in the house because her dogs were there. I guess she mm -hmm. was like, oh, why is it wet? And I'm like, because mm, you're blessed. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> and if you can't get your hands on, like I said, incense, mirror and frankincense, go go to the supermarket, grab a few mothballs, come for balls, right? Mm -hmm. Put them in a, in a burner and just light them up and just walk around the house. It, 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 it does like a little um, invisible line and repels anything negative away. And you can but also none keep of it burning, but be by careful. Itself. You yes. have to combine it with ritual and a focused intention. Exactly. If you're not doing it that way, all of the smudging, all of the holy water, everything you're putting down only lasts for a little while. You have to combine it with inviting in that higher spirit to protect and cleanse the home. That's the real cleansing, is a spiritual cleansing. You actually have to believe in what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. and, and there are many in your houses. ways, but all of them are based on faith and focus. Exactly. Yes, intention is everything. If you don't have that intention behind it, then it's, it's a moot point. But also clean stuff, guys. Remember, clutter is a huge mm -hmm. cause of having all of that negative negativity going on around you. You might yeah. feel like it's something just grading at you or after you clutter has a lot to do with it your mental space needs to be clear and so does your physical space yeah if i can expand on that a little bit because it's really super important every time somebody 
is being affected by the paranormal, there are underlying problems that have to be dealt with. So clutter in the home, clean it out. Make sure that the energy is flowing cleanly, like you said. But also play relaxing music, not headbanging music. <laughs> Watch com comedies that actually make you happy and laugh. Make love, show your love. Don't, don't fight inside the house. Take it outside that space and make sure you can try to resolve it as best as possible before you come back in. Carry as little negativity into the home as possible because these things are merely parasites mm -hmm. that will feed off of that negativity so that they can grow stronger. And I'm not talking about human spirits. I'm talking about inhuman mm -hmm. spirits. And yes. personal hygiene. Have a shower. Yes. Cleanse yourself. Mm -hmm. Water cleanses everything. Oh, Epsom salt baths are terrific yes. for getting rid of that bad energy. Yeah, I mm -hmm. should really I buy stock in Epsom salts. Well, even I before, I don't know why I always liked them because it didn't do anything for my muscles, but I always felt better mm -hmm. taking so even after I take a shower, I would take a bath because I was like, this is, I, that's the only time I could calm down was when I was sitting in a bath with those. You know, mm -hmm. it was weird. But then when she explained it to me, I was like, oh, that makes so much sense. Mm -hmm. Janice Brenner says hello to you guys. Hey, Janice. Um, and yes to the cleaning thing. I was going to say something else, but I don't remember now because, you know, we get to other stuff. But exactly what he said because mm -hmm. that is the hardcore truth we have to make sure that we eliminate all other causes before we can pinpoint where this activity or where this energy is actually coming from and please do not be offended when we ask you know how what's the state of the home and stuff and don't be offended by what we're trying to do help wise and if they don't want to be helped you know it's just like in any situation you know whether it be drugs alcohol anything if they if that person doesn't want help we can't force it upon them but we are always here so when you actually do feel safe and comfortable enough to confide in us please always reach out yeah, yeah. all right that is it thank you again so much guys sorry that we ended up having another question remember if you are a supporter on facebook for the paranormalwarehouse.com page. I'm going live right after this to do tarot readings for you guys. And you guys have a wonderful morning because it's two there now, I think, right? It's after two. two ten. Look at me being the world clock now. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll get these ready for you, honey. You send me your address, okay? Thank you, darling. I love you guys so much. Thank Appreciate you. Thank you. Have bye a good bye. night. Bye. Love. Bye. -bye. Is press leave, yeah. <laughs> and remember, guys, if you want to discover the secrets to the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration, and catch the live in just a few seconds for the tarot readings. It's going to be a different live that is just for the supporters. If you'd like the readings, go ahead and click support on the Facebook page for paranormalwarehouse.com, and we will get started.